You're listening to the Nerd to Know Media Network. Join us at nerdtoknowmedia.com. from the Blanchestan Center. This is Phoenix FM. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to pitch bad movies and share pornography with one another. According to the Nerd Index, you should be upside down in a junior high toilet around the clock. This is the Well, good luck! Tag is in, tag is out. Never miss communication. It's over 9,000! My name is Foxy. The balls are in there. And welcome to this week's edition of the Nerd to Know Basis Show, airing on Phoenix 92.5 FM and all those wonderful places on the internet, such as Spotify. Uh, I am Kean, and with me today are... Oh, hey, it's Dara. Ahoy. And me, it's Kev. Every Ahoy. time. Yes. Every, every time. <laughs> I'm like, is Kev yes. D, D for Dara. <laughs> yes. Little, little known fact, I, we actually don't plan a recording time. I just show up in their houses. Like, Kate's like, here you go. <laughs> he hitchhikes all the way to Meath and finds both me and her in two places at once, no less. He's calling himself. Me- Katie's Meath's better at hiding. Like a- That's why she hasn't been on for a while. Meath's a That's bit right. like a like a folded wormhole in that sort of way, where you can be in both north of Meath and south of Meath at once. No, it's kind if of you want to be in, in the it. podcast game. You got to like <laughs> your mysticism. Like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's the singularity that's kicking around new grade, you know. <laughs> and you know what? Speaking of scientific concepts, we might as well jump straight into the main event, as I think there'll be a lot of feelings on this. Barbie and Oppenheimer, which everyone on their mums has an opinion. So, so do we. So uh, I have only tragically seen Oppenheimer. Uh, Kev and Dara, have you seen both uh, yes. Barbie and Oppenheimer? Yes. 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 Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to take a little sit back. We'll go in alphabetical order of movies as well. And we'll jump in with Barbie because I know you've got conflicting feelings on this just based on the WhatsApp that keeps waking up my infant child. So, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> oh God. Put the put the vibrate on or like turn the vibrate Oh. Turn the vibrator off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I tell you what, before we get into any of the nitty gritty, I haven't seen it. I might be the only person who hasn't seen it. Um, okay, Kev, could you give us a rundown, just a, an unopinionated like blurb synopsis of what the Barbie movie is? Oh, geez. Okay. That's a great question because it is kind of a lot. <laughs> 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 now that's the slogan for the poster. Just it's a lot. <laughs> Because <laughs> it is both a character exploration while also, let's see. I'll tell you what, you collect your thoughts. It, it, you it give is, us it a is alternate, it, no, no, it's like, it, it, ha- there's a Barbie land that exists in an almost alternate universe to our own actual real life world. Right. Where <laughs> I can already see your face crumbling. <laughs> just Me or Dara? You. <laughs> Me? No, I'm, I'm just trying to imagine it in my head. Uh, that exists outside of the bounds of our reality where all of the Barbies that people have played with live their perfect Barbie life. <laughs> okay. Um, so kind of not, not like a Toy Story thing. It's like an alternate dimension. like Sort of. Okay. Um, and then when a stereotypical Barbie played by Margot Robbie right. uh, starts feeling... Feeling feelings that a Barbie doesn't normally start feeling like 
existential dread and the thoughts of dying. (laughs) She has to get to the bottom of that. So her and Ken go on a wild ride out to L.A. Like real L.A. Like real L.A. Okay. uh, Go to Mattel and try to get to the bottom of this. And uh, you know what? I... It feels wrong explaining this movie. <laughs> you know what? Don't 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 give the whole plot away. Yeah, like, they, like I mean, it, in the unlikely event that someone apart from me hasn't seen it, sure, what? Not give away. That's yeah. Like, like it is. It is only out like what two or three weeks. Yeah, it's still early days. Yeah, um, but the movie does kind of very heavily revolve around self identity and particularly the place of women in society. <laughs> okay, well, before I go to Dara, um. Is this a children's film or not? Because I'm not sure what the not, verdict is in that. Not really. I think okay. 12s is definitely, I think, the kind of, the, like, it is a 12s movie, and I think that's kind of the right rating for it. Right. Mostly because I don't think, like, it's simply the fact that anything younger, everything, all the stuff will just go right over their heads. Right. I was wondering if this like, is, like, a, like a 12s, because there's nothing, like, insensitive in it, or, like... Like, say, the Puss in Boots film, which came out earlier, that is a kid's film, but it's also, like, very starkly about death. So I was wondering kind of what side of the fence it's on, like, you know. No, like, I think, like, you know, you might be able to sit, say, you know, your daughter down in front of it, and, you know, she'll be distracted by all the very bright colours. Right. Uh, But I don't think any of the real, the messages of the movie... But it's not for children. No. No. Appropriate, but not aimed at, like... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, like that's like, even like the what? Sorry. Oh no, I was gonna say even like I think the marketing really kind of like shone towards that because you know it was all very memeified. It was all very kind of aimed directed at like a lot of very kind of young adult audience. Yes, yes. Even though I'm not on TikTok, I've still seen all those and like the the fonts and artworks and all that kind of stuff. Now, Dara, I understand you had some misgivings about the film. What was your experience with Barbie? Well, the main one is is what you talked about there, where it's like it's not for kids, and then you see people bringing their kids for it, and you're like, oh, it's not really. Oh, okay, them. I can appreciate you know? that's kind of awkward. Yeah, and and I would say, you know, if anyone is listening to this um, who hasn't brought their child, and they're like, hey, I want to see a Barbie movie, it's like, then go see a Barbie movie. Like that would be a good idea, rather than this, which is not. I mean, that's kind of like the biggest problem I had with it. But I want to like. I've I've had a second thought of it. I've had a, a change of heart on this where I, I didn't really think much of this movie to be honest with you. Um, then I reflected on it. I think it's the best movie ever, really. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> because here's the thing. You woke my baby up for nothing? <laughs> no, it's like, because it's so ridiculous. Like right. it's, it's so, like basically the, the premise of the movie is they, they go back, Ken discovers the patriarchy and brings it back. <laughs> <laughs> Makes everyone happy in Barbie land. <laughs> Barbie comes back, reinstitutes the the feminist. Uh, don't don't give away the whole plot. No, no, okay. I'm not. I'm not. It, yeah. it reinstitutes the 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 dictator, the feminist the dictatorship, basically. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's kind of and you know that's kind of like the main conceit in the movie, right? But I'm like, right, it's so ridiculous and so on the nose that I'm like, maybe that's the point in the movie, and I think it's it's wonderful, but showing right. how ridiculous the internet was in 2014. So. If that is the intent, it's one of the greatest movies ever made. Um, <laughs> genuinely, and I think, and that's kind of where I've looped around. I'm like, right, it's so crazy and so on the nose that maybe that was the point. Um, oh yeah, but, no, we we have we have come through the nexus. The need for subtlety has disappeared. This movie <laughs> hits hits you over the head with a blunt mallet about what it's actually talking about. But see, Which, it, here's the thing: it's either see that's what I mean. I I genuinely think that this movie because it's so widely out of touch in, in lots of ways um, that it's just it, it captures the meme it, it's a meme right it is a meme right it captures the meme of like 2014 internet so perfectly that, in terms like, of gender stuff it, in, in terms of like, everything it's right. just li- it's literally like they took Tumblr packaged it and like delivered it like from 2014 and if that's the point, I mean, I think it's wonderful. It really is. But again, like, as Kev said very correctly, like, everything in this movie is going to go over, like, a five-year-old's head. Like, they're just right. they're just not going to know. Like, it's it's like, okay, y- y- the only thing that's there, really, for a younger audience, and I think that's the discussion to have in this, where it's like, if you take, like, for example, you, you have a, a daughter, Keen, right? 
Yeah. Um, the only thing she would probably get out of it is the colors and what's going on. But there's nothing for her there. There really isn't. And I, I, I'm just like, that's a bit disingenuous that they should have like marketed it in that way. Well, I um, mean, it's look. No, I mean, like, 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 like we had this discussion when because Guardians Three is out in Disney Plus today. We yeah. had this discussion around, you know, Guardians Three. It that bothered me more because oh, absolutely, kids yeah, are yeah. going to flock to see Guardians of the Galaxy. I do think, kind of like Kev said, the Barbie movie has been kind of front and center about how it's not a kids movie per se. It's yeah, but, more in line with like, but say, the X Men movies of the two no, where but here, no, but here's the thing: property, but they've but here's the thing. It, you know, you go to a screening now. And yeah, you're going to have some people memeing up. You're going to have people like mm-hmm. myself who's there to watch it just to see it. Yeah. And then there's like 20 kids. There's like tw- families, right? Like 20 kids going. And I'm like, oh, th- this isn't for you. And I would be interested, as, you know, to hear someone like that. I don't know, Kev, if you have any experience with that, of, of what the children thought of the movie. That's a good no, that's, I, point of view. Like, actually, I may I may ask some of my students. That's a good because that, that, that would be at. that would be interesting to see. Yeah. Like, did they like it? Like you know, I don't think that. I guess that I don't think there's anything that's inappropriate. No, kids, absolutely not. Could, like it's you just, just say, kid yeah. in front of it. It's yeah. just I don't know how entertained they'd be by it. That's yeah. the point that I make, and I'm like, there's nothing in it yeah. that's inherently bad. Like as far as like that, that like I'll be honest with you, Garden Street is a much tougher watch, even as an adult. Like yeah. it, it's horrific, right? But it's a great movie. But it's, it is there's some horrific stuff in it. Mm. But it's like, yeah, there, I just don't know how entertained they would be by it, you know. And that's why I'm like, a lot of the success of this movie because it it's wildly successful, right? Oh yeah, hasn't it like beaten like loads of Star Wars films in yeah, terms but that of is, that, that isn't hard that isn't hard those movies suck but no uh, but I mean like like you know it's cracking uh, like the top five of earners like in oh some- absolutely but again I think this is and if we were to do like I was just literally someone just texted me there like two minutes ago saying they walked out of a Barbie screen and because it's just packed and it, it, it's, oh. packed, you know, it's packed to, yeah. still where people are just bringing their kids to it and I'm just like right I have to say as a marketing employee it's, it's incredible but at the same time, is it kind of be a case where it's just like, oh, that really wasn't that good for kids. But then again, as I said, um, I, I've completely done a 180 on it. I think it's a phenomenal movie for what it is. Um, and yeah, there we go. So Okay, well, I, I'll, I'll put a question to you about the film in a second. But Kev, we never actually got your thoughts on it. I'm assuming you're also I thought, positive, are you? Uh, I, I adore it. Like, I, I, I came out, like, I, I have criticisms about it. I do think that there is that there is some character issues, some pacing issues, but mm. any misgivings I have about it are kind of swamped by the the overall vibe of the movie. Mm. I think it was a blast. Uh, every character... I, I adore Ryan Gosling's Ken. That <laughs> man is sheer entertainment and has some lines that, like, will stick with... There's a, like, there's a part where he says a horse is just a man extender, and that's going to stick in my brain... <laughs> Yeah, because he, he, he's died. the hero of the movie. That's the thing. He's the hero of the oh movie. Oh my god! Well, I mean, uh, Ryan Gosling is uh, one of those. Like, well, no, think uh, about it. Think, think about it. Think about it. He he went to Barbie Land, made everyone happy, and then was undone. I wouldn't say happy. No, I would go. Happier. I would go so far as say brainwashed. Well, <laughs> depend, actually, see, this is this is where it's interesting. At the beginning, where the this is why I'd love to know what the actual reading of the movie is because there is two very 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 distinct readings of this mm. movie and it, it's one or the other uh it's like at what point were they brainwashed who was brainwashing who and define happiness um and it, it that's, that's deep, what man <laughs> well this is what i'm saying to you i actually thought about it a lot of people just haven't there there's this knee-jerk reaction where they're either reading a, su- a superficial uh take on it which mm. i mean it's fair it's totally cool or it's um, it kind of goes a little bit deeper, and the fact that uh, Ryan Gosling's Ken makes a lot, like for example, the way they treat um, pregnant Barbie as some kind of like freak that's off in the corner, and she actually has a voice in the movie near the end, and there, and then when he brings in the patriarchy or whatever, um, they're all talking and they're all engaged and they're all kind of coupled off and paired off with each other, and and how they, um, I'm not going to ruin it by by mm. by getting at the end of it, but. It's like, right, was he the villain? Or because well, here's the, what, what's interesting about it is they, they never hit a midpoint, you know? That's the closest thing to a midpoint of like equality in in, in Barbie Land, which is when Ryan G- G- Gosling brings in. And it, it never, then you just reset it back to what it was at the very beginning, which was a dictatorship. 
Except so, for the fact that none of the women under that point had any agency. <laughs> none of the men had any agency either at the start. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't go back. And that's yeah, no, that's that around. was part. Then, like, so by the end of it, then they've come to realize that they don't need to be defined by either of them. No, because it goes right back to being Barbie Land. They they go right back to it, and Barbie leaves and goes off and does it. She doesn't got to ruin the end of it. But what I'm saying is, it's like that's wh- why it's very interesting. This movie, even if it's accidental, there are two completely different readings of it, which. I'm like, that's actually really good. It, it's it's now, it's transcended the point of just being a movie. It's like, you know what this movie's like, Kev? It's like The Shining. You can read The Shining in 27 different ways, which all could be completely wrong, but they also could be completely right. And that's what I'm saying. Either way, this movie is a phenomenal watch by existing. So well, I give then it can I credit. ask them, because uh, uh, my wife put this to me before I went on the air, which is like, she asked, like, even she said, even before the film came out, everyone was incredibly, you know, ridiculously hyped for it. What is it about this film, regardless of even the quality of the film itself? What has drawn everyone to it to make it this like cultural phenomenon? Is it just Marketing. a good social media? Yeah. Or yeah, is there something I, more to it? I think, I, look, I, I, Kev, sorry. I, Oh, sorry, go on, go on, go, go, go. Uh, well, that's, yeah, no, the marketing is the big one. Like, they, they really put everything forefront into making this like, a like an event. just like making an this event. A, like making this yeah. a cult of personality movie, but also Barbie has had that kind of cult of personality for kind of the past decade or so. Mm. I've I've talked at length about how much I love a TV series called Barbie Life in the Dream Haze, mm. and that definitely kind of kick started like the new wave of Barbie love, where it's this kind of meta contextual idea of barbie as a divine god being in some certain <laughs> circumstances yeah that makes sense actually that makes a lot of sense oh yeah no barb like yeah. in, in that barbie is the president an astronaut and yeah. a nobel prize winner but yeah. also just kind of lives her life I lives her life excellent it's wonderful yeah. Yeah. um so like that's yeah that that kind of like really just jet propelled that whole concept mm-hmm. Um, and I think on that again, as well, Barbie it, cult of personality. So I think on that fed into it. But it's also the fact as well that like it was organic. It wasn't like look. There was a there was a. I was going to say, Chris. There's a boatload of of marketing that went into this, and obviously, but some of it was very organic as well. The whole uh, Barbieheimer thing, you know, where it was like, okay, that was a funny meme. It's kind of like what happened with with more with uh, Morbius. You know, it's Morbid time. <laughs> you except, know, except it's it like worked. It, it worked, and they brought it back. You know. Uh, but yeah, I, well, look, you know, it's it's a fundamental better movie than than Morbius, you know, because you know, once he With shows up and morphs all over that guy, that's kind of it, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it. But what's interesting about that is, I think this can only really be done once because they're trying to do it now with Saw and Paw Patrol. Saw Patrol. Oh, that's- Oh, that that is only industry yeah. plans. Yeah, that's they what are. I'm saying, though. Can that's I just say the first Paw Patrol movie is actually class? It's really no, but, yeah, but but yeah, see, but the adult Saw on movie fans aren't going to go see a Paw Patrol movie no. for the meme. No, no, no. And but that's what I'm saying. I think this is like a lightning in the jar kind of thing. Where yes, yeah, you know, it, it, it like if a sequel to the Barbie movie came out, I don't think it would be as successful. Genuinely, right? No, but, it's, it's going to be a diminishing returns like yeah, movie. But like, it, it, it 100% soon. is lightning in the bottle. And I think um, as uh, as film goers, we haven't really had an event movie. Like comic book movies aren't doing it anymore. There isn't, you know, this was the first event movie, you know, that you can see yeah. like, like the two of them. Certainly. You know, people were going on the same day. I was in Taekwondo and they were talking about going to a UCD is, mm. you know, showing nonstop screenings of it. It really is a whole thing. And then it, it, it there's memes that it, it's very much like the, the last Despicable Me movie that came out where they were all showing up in the, or the Minions. The suits. Yeah, the suits, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. And, and that stuff you can't, you can't astroturf. You have to really just kind of go with it. So, I mean, look, is it the best movie of all time? No. Is Oppenheimer the best? We'll talk about Oppenheimer in a minute, but is that the best movie of all time? No. It Was this an event? Absolutely. And fair play to everyone who came up with that. And look, if it is some marketing executive, give him or her all the money in the world because they have earned it. <laughs> they have yeah, no, they've earned it. the code. Yeah. They've absolutely I think, earned it. I think, no, I think this was, this was certainly, this was, it, this was a homegrown effort. Every, yeah, like, I think so too. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you have to, you have to have the population kind of believe in this. Yeah, yes, and, and it's, and and it's yeah. bizarre that Indiana Jones Five was completely over, which should be an event film, was completely overshadowed by you know, actually, on the horizon. Have like, we talked about touch- that actually? Have we talked about that movie at all? Yeah? 
No, <laughs> I haven't seen it. Um, oh, fair. Okay, which I've seen, I've seen I, it twice. Which I, I think there is a point, though, on that that I do mm. want to talk because I've now noticed that anytime I see, like, an advertisement for a new, like, first party, like, Disney title. Yeah. I, unless it's, like, I, I think I have yet to see one that I have had, like, a drive to see. Mm. That's fair. Because in the back of my mind, my first thought is, I can wait three months and watch this at home. Yeah. And you know what? And you know what? That's actually um, a lot of what's happening now, particularly with the strike, uh, is a result of the gambling on streaming. Um, yeah. And I think in a couple of years, Kev, that's that's a that's a brilliant point. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's why actually, the Scarlett Johansson that. pretty much left the MCU on bad terms, isn't it? Like, you well, know, because Black Widow went to Disney Plus on the same day. Well, the... There was a report a couple of days ago. Uh, it was a Disney executive. I think it was a town hall or something. Mm. And they've identified like seven things. And one of them was streaming has actually hurt Disney's film industry. Right. And, uh, and then also releasing TV shows uh, for Marvel, for say, has actually ruined the quality of Marvel movies as well. Like I can't find them. I don't have them in front of me. But Kev, you have hit the nail on the head. Yeah. You like, know, I, in I the back of your mind, they're going to show up three weeks later, uh, three months later. And there's that's no it. Like point. it. If like, because it's it's at least with with Disney, like there is that um, predictability of it, because like they they've shown it was like okay, like Guardians that was out three months ago that came out today, I watched it today. Hmm. Um, if if the the common if the like, I think maybe if uh, the common the recurrence was that like, it was a year out, hmm. which it was a long time. But it means that, like, you have that. There's still uh, the fear of missing out thing. Yeah, you still have FOMO. Yeah. You still have that, like, oh, this is a limited quantity while mm. I think three months is not a long time. No, it's like, remember a couple of years ago, well, many years ago at this point, um, a movie would come out and it'd be like six to eight months before it hit the video, sh- the video yeah. store. And then you have yes, to go rent yes. it. And then you could buy it like a year later. Exactly. That's all gone now. Now it's like, oh, it's going to come out it will be on the streets of Hong Kong in about 90 minutes after yes. it's been released. So you can watch it there and then it comes out on streaming. And it's like, that's what they're battling against. But I I, I think a lot of this, a lot of things that we've kind of talked about um, with the strike, blah, 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 with content being poor, a lot of stuff, it's symptomatic really of moving towards streaming as as the core but, uh, business model of, of all these studios. Hmm. And yeah, I mean, I totally get it. Like, I, I really liked Indiana Jones. I thought it was wonderful. Um, but yeah, I totally get why you didn't bother because you go yeah. and watch it probably now, next week. You know? No, there are there are still like things that will get me to cinema. Like, you know, Barbie being the event movie. I like Greta Gerwig. That got me there. And there's other directors that will get me there. Like Christopher Nolan. <laughs> oh, oh what a look segment. at that. What a pro. Absolute I pro. I mean, look, I there's no top paid. of mine. Might as well go home. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, let's 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 touch on, on Oppenheimer because we all sure. have seen this, right? Sure. Okay. All right. Well, Keith, so, how about you talk about it? Because you didn't get to talk at all in the sure. segment. I will say yeah. now, I I I missed possibly the first 10 minutes because um just because of cues and that kind of stuff, which is nice to see in a cinema. It's nice to be in a crowded cinema. Let me just say, I know some of that is to do with COVID initially, but it is still just nice to be in a packed cinema. But anyway, um, yes, Oppenheimer, the story of the man who developed the atomic bomb. And it's like, it's me and my wife, Steve, who were talking about this. It's really because people say, oh, it's three hours and immediately kind of your eyes roll into the back of your head. Mm. It doesn't feel it. It's kind of three different films or three stories broken in three acts. You've got sort of an hour of like preamble where we get to know all the characters and all that kind of stuff. We've yeah. got the actual activity of the scientists developing it and kind of taking away in the back, you have the McCarthy hearings uh, of which basically when everyone threw him under the bus for, you know, developing the bomb they asked him to make. So Don't it's, forget being a communist. <laughs> yes, yes. The worst crime. Yes, but like, you know, I mean, we, we've studied kind of the McCarthy hearings in school. Yeah. Like you accuse someone of being a communist as a means to get rid of them because they already don't like. Yeah, you. it was literally like the, the worst thing he did. Witch hunts. Yeah. yeah, it was literally the worst thing he did to at the time. Uh, like that's the way it was being portrayed. The yeah. fight, despite the fact he had, you know, created this massive weapon that killed thousands of people. And he's like, oh, but you're a communist. It's like, yeah, but 
you know and even though that, that was, was a mad. totally normal thing to talk about in the exactly. 20s and 30s yeah yeah exactly it was, it was crazy like it was like yeah and then that, that that was actually very interesting i mean that's a very good thing to call out like the yeah the way that was portrayed as the worst thing he did amongst his peers is bizarre and it ruined his career for a very long time for no real reason and the movie goes to great extents to go no he actually wasn't his wife was but then renounced it all and he was yeah. a patriot it was but, con- but it's know, worth it kind of pointing out that like you know um kind of all of the kind of empires in the world be they literal like monarchies or or sort of something akin to it fell in that space between world war one and world war two absolutely so yeah. capitalism wasn't the like or whatever you would call the American equivalent, wasn't the standard across the world. It would have been perfectly normal to just say, okay, what's happening in the world? What's, where is this going next? Like, you know, it's not like communism and socialism wasn't then what the way people talk about it now. Yeah, but, absolutely. Like, but, yeah. but we're kind of putting the cart before the horse. Like, that's like... Um, like I'll, Kev, be honest, what, I'll be honest, sorry, Keen, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It's not, it's not something I expected to be brought up in the movie. Oh yeah, you know. I mean, Kev, did you were, were you like when that Not was terribly. all brought in? I was like, I actually, "Whoa, this is surprising." I actually, because on the run up, I ended up listening to a, uh, to a to a podcast series on the Manhattan Project. Mm. Just because I like it was it's something I know very little about, and I almost kind of, and I'm almost glad I at least kind of had a background knowledge of what was actually happening. Yeah. Because the movie glosses over a lot of stuff. It does, yeah. So, yeah. I, see, that's what I was most surprised by. I'm like, yeah, they gloss over the more the things you would expect to be in a movie about a nuclear bomb. Yeah, genuinely. Well, it's it's more of a character study than a like. This is how we make this. Like Steve, it. it's it's, it's said, not a man. It's going to be the American Imitation Game, and she was spot on. Yeah, said, that's actually yeah. a very, very, very good analysis uh, mm-hmm. analogy. Really is. Yeah, that's it. Like it's it's not it's not a Manhattan Project movie. It's an Oppenheimer movie, and yeah. there's some, and there's someone who was also screwed, Alan, Alan Turin, the guy who invented oh, computers. I would say, oh, it's oh, much more than Oppenheimer was. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's like, oh my god, you know, as I said, the worst crime he ever did. You know, yeah. <laughs> and he didn't do anything. It's uh, it, it, it really is um, that that time. I think the the dread that both mm-hmm. movies capture, um, for just you know for doing nothing really, just being involved. Um, that's that's, but isn't that just it. the most peculiar thing? Like because. We, should, we will kind of get into the plot because, I mean, less than the Barbie movie, it is history. We can't yeah. be slightly more liberal with talking about the film. Yeah. But, like, you have these McCarthy hearings, which are kind of the framing device of the film. And really cleverly, I love how uh, the Robert Downey Jr. character, all the scenes of his point of view are shot in black and white. Yes. And all the scenes yes. from uh, Oppenheimer's point of view are shot in full colour. So you'll get the same scene twice yeah. different ways which is a very yeah. clever touch very clever but, but isn't it bizarre that like we're kind of waiting to find out okay what is he on trial for because yeah. like you know he's building this bomb you know you've got a reasonable guess in the back of your head and it's when you find out the reason he's on trial you know for a man who essentially was responsible for killing what eighty thousand people was it yeah look it's, like it's, it's like the yeah, he's on trial is actually incredibly petty and frivolous. Like. Yeah, you, you yeah. think like war crimes. The movie mm. is what you're expecting, right? Yeah. And it's like actually no, he's more for his, you know, personal beliefs, which aren't really anyone's business. Uh, and you weren't even his beliefs. No, <laughs> just, no, what like crazy. I said earlier, you know, it wasn't even his beliefs. The the beliefs were a means to an end on another agenda. Exactly, you know, because but, but we don't we don't know really what it is. But basically, yeah. it's extremely petty, and it's used like they're just digging up stuff that actually isn't even relevant, and they're just spinning. Mm. Keen, what you said is right. It's literally like the modern witch trials. Mm. You know, it really is. It's wild. Yeah, and it's it's, it's and horrible. See as well. Mm. Yeah, like that's and like you know, it doesn't. I wouldn't say it glorifies, you know, the atomic bomb or anything therein. Yeah, it like doesn't, it, yeah. it makes like it, it shows off the like that's awful and terrifying. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't paint up and like even outside of like his his trial and his hearings and that. Uh, like it still doesn't paint him as a as a good dude. He <laughs> makes a lot. He does no, a lot of awful stuff. Like it it's does. weird because it yeah, doesn't it go does, down yeah. the route of like you know in say gangster movies where they kind of walk that line of he does bad things and he's also cool. It doesn't do that. It's no. incredibly, like with his affairs and things, 
It's incredibly <laughs> his most, affairs and uh, things. Right. <laughs> All this stuff <laughs> yes. he does. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like there isn't a, oh, he's done this bad thing. Later he learns his lesson. No. Yeah. He does just carry on. Yeah. And like the film yeah. doesn't really glorify him or demonize him. It's almost, for lack of a better term, documentary feel. Like that's actually just, a good way. Yeah. You're supposed to conclude on your own. Yeah. Even he doesn't know. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it, it kind of sets up a lot. It sets up a lot of his, his character. And mm-hmm. I knew a fair bit about the Manhattan Project. I mean, obviously, like, like, studied in college like so uh, i know a fair bit about it but i oppenheimer is you you knew who he was but the movie does a good job of establishing him and how he sees the world and starts off with you know trying to poison his college professor because he doesn't like him and you're like jesus (laughs) this is like this is pretty far you know and then he's he's a weird uncomfortable dude (laughs) exactly and you're like okay and then eventually it does go into even with the problem of right i'm gonna you know he's gonna kill thousands of people like actually before that he like he he goes we could blow up the atmosphere (laughs) and you're like well you're still gonna do it you know and they're the stakes that you're going for so when the when the movie takes you into that where that world and then all of a sudden it's it's just supposed by somebody who wants to score a political victory over him. You're like, whoa. Yeah. Well, that's your, well, that's just it. It really, you know? again, to go to the imitation game, it it really gets across what the environment of being in the science community was like at the time. Because like, the, where it differs from the imitation game is like, it starts off and we get uh, Heisenberg, I think. We meet Heisenberg and Niels Bohr and we get yeah. a sense of what the community is like across the world before yeah. World War II. And then, like the you maybe you'd be able to say the specific star, but they crack something, something yeah. important in yeah. Germany. They crack but, the, enigma, the enigma code, yeah. Yes, that was no, no, not the enigma code. Some some kind of scientific. Oh, code. the nuke, yeah, the the atom, they yeah. uh, the they crack the, the atom. Yes, yeah. they crack the atom. They yeah. they make a point of saying that we have a head start on this because Hitler calls quantum physics Jewish science. Mm. So, like you know, it's. They have a, a basically a year's head start before they cop on and realize they can make a bomb out of this. You've got that ticking clock element to it. Uh, but then, like, I mean, I hate to kind of give away too much, but we know from history that the war ends essentially before the bomb is finished. And then you have these extended scenes of like, well, we've built this thing. What do we do with this? Like, you know, yeah, is and, it morally and, and, correct and that, to do this? Do we and that, we yeah, and that's where it becomes war crimes the movie, you know. That's which exactly is, it. Which like, is what it, I expect, which is what I honestly expected going in. Exactly. Um, so there's lots and lots of like kind of like conversations and intrigue as well, because we know through foreshadowing in the framing device that someone gives the hydrogen bomb to Russia. Yeah. And they they cast it really well because like I went into this not knowing who was in it. And someone like noteworthy shows up every five minutes. Yeah, especially in I, those scenes in Los Alamos. Even Drake you only get like sorry, even Josh from Drake and Josh. That really up. helps keep track of everything. You know, That's, if if I may point out my favorite celebrity cameo, yes. absolutely Gary Oldman. Yeah, where was he? He, he was, was Truman. He was Truman. Oh my god! Yeah. Really? <laughs> oh wow, he's the best actor of our there, generation. There I is. didn't even see him. <laughs> it is. It is how he just. Shoes on the word Nagasaki. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Astonishing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I but actually, I'm that. glad you brought that up because it kind of felt like, even though I know Christopher Nolan will keep making films, it kind of felt like a bit of a last hurrah for Christopher Nolan because all his regulars were popping up here and there. Like Gary Oldman was there. Obviously, Killian Murphy has probably been the actor who's been in the most Christopher Nolan films, but never yeah, you in, put the him in all three Batman movies. Just all three Batmans cool. and Inception and uh, Dunkirk. So that's five. Uh, and he wasn't the leading man in, in any of those. Uh, like, so he's at the center of it. You have Gary Oldman. You have a few other faces who like um, Kenneth Branagh was in Dunkirk as well. Like uh, the only odd omission was Hans Zimmer, like who didn't do the music for this one. Uh, the music. Uh, I think it says it was, Ludwig, Ludwig Granson. Granson. The yeah. music is astonishing. Oh yeah. I, no. I don't. The entire like sound design yeah. is brilliant. I I would also like to 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 raise my to put my cinema cap on and say that I got to see this in seventy mil. Oh. Uh, in seventy millimeter, which gorgeous. Like the little like the the aspect ratio is great. The little grainy textures. Mm-hmm. It was uh, seventy millimeters a great format. Yeah. Um. 
and yeah, no, the, it was in the IFI and some of those basier moments, it was, it was almost like a 40 experience. Just mm. things rumbled a lot. I, yeah. I had a similar thing. I, I went to Dunleary's, like, I'm not sure about the quality of the screen, but we right. went to the, the extender chair screening. Oh, where you can, yeah. Like recline back. And I got a huge fright because as the bomb was going off, <laughs> I hit the, reverse extender button and got tipped out of my chair <laughs> <laughs> literally blew you out of your seat yes <laughs> my my favorite experience was see in the barbie movie I, I was surrounded by people so i wasn't able to fully enjoy it and i couldn't have my phone out in this i was able to sit at the back and have my phone out and it was a brilliant experience why do you want your phone though to scroll tumblr no to what? not tumblr i read it why though it's got bored I think that's yeah, like we we we've been talking a lot. I I'm I'm sitting on the bench here with Dara. I don't think this is Nolan's best work. It's not really? it's no, really I, not. I, I, I think it's fantastic. It's a good flick, all right, right? I, yeah, but kind of. I mean, the problem look, it wasn't bad. It just it wasn't his best work. I mean, when I go see Nolan uh, uh films, I, I expect something a bit more groundbreaking. And maybe seven seventy millimeter might have done it because seventy no, millimeter is phenomenal. I, it, it didn't do it. It, it doesn't. Okay. Like there's that's it. You're you've hit the nail on the head. Every Nolan movie has felt like an event where he yeah. has like pushed the format forward. Yes, exactly. It's, it's all of his trademarks. It is a very well directed and well made movie. The cast do it sucks. It's just it's almost like standard Nolan. And on top of that. It doesn't need to be three hours long. <laughs> no, I, I completely this this... disagree. I'm sorry. I think this is one of his best ones. I actually, I felt like this was Nolan a bit more restrained, but a bit more artsy. Like sequences mm. jump out at me where like, say when he's sat down in the train with the, with the interviewing officer or like the scenes at Florence Pugh or like when he's trying to give the speech post the bomb going off and you've got all the sound cutting out and coming out. This felt like, I feel like Nolan has a style and he actually pushed himself a bit out of his comfort zone. As well. And I noticed mm. he wrote and directed this one too, yeah, uh, look, which I think is a first. So no, I, I disagree. I feel, I feel like this is much more ambitious than, because like you say, with every Nolan film, there's some sort of technical achievement. Like even Dunkirk, which is the last one I saw, had the three time zone things going on. This yeah. is where I felt like it was the more back to basics. And for a movie about explosions, there was not a lot of explosions. It was basically theater. And I really love that for it, you know? See, maybe I think this is the problem with the marketing as well. The marketing, it, it, look, if it wasn't Christopher Nolan directing it, I probably would have been like, yeah, it was, it was very, very good. But because it was Christopher Nolan, I'm like, I, I just left and I'm like, I really want to watch Tenet because I thought Tenet, it, while also not his best movie, is probably the most visually uh, other than Inception, which is a good movie and has the visual things as well. Well, then uh, maybe that's where we're getting our wires crossed because I was absolutely is. to see it as a film and you were seeing it as, as a Christopher Nolan film. Christopher yeah. Nolan film. Yeah. And I think I enjoyed it much more with that perspective. Like, I think so. I, I think, yeah. Yeah. I think maybe my, that's my biggest gripe I found was pacing. I think there was, there was a part, I think solidly at about the two hour mark. I felt myself checking my watch. I yeah. like it was how it had structured itself. And I liked, like I'm I'm not against the idea of it cutting back and forth from the hearings to to Los Alamos and that. It hit a point where it kind of Los Alamos had finished and it still was cutting back and forth between times. Like, that, time that's jumps. when that's when I really I thought, that's when I yeah, that's when it lost me as well. That's it. Like it yeah. I think the story they were telling was interesting, but it was a lot of characters I'd hadn't really gotten engaged with mm. talk. Like, I don't mind a movie that's that is a lot of talking, that is a lot of just kind of like discussion on events that have happened. There's a sequence that like the last third of this movie is just that. Mm. And it kind it it feels long in the tooth. It feels like it has we've hit like the end and it keeps going. <laughs> I yeah, that's exactly I, it. I get where you're coming exactly from. It, yeah. I personally exactly don't agree for me that's when the film came alive because like it's like that hollow victory thing of they spent so it's like well I suppose like Jurassic Park it's like you know spent so long trying to figure out what you could do you never figured out what you should because he gets his dream he develops yes. it and yeah. it brings everyone nothing but pain and misery because he he is quite a naive character they they do make a good point of showing that and he genuinely oh. seems to believe that this will bring world peace through some yeah. duplicitous means. 
And so you get the fallout of all of this playing out over the last hour. And it feels like maybe I'm just watching it from the acting perspective, but it feels like this is where everyone suddenly ups their game. You see, and, and, that, and like, no, you know, that's that's the thing. That's what happened, right? But it's not the way the movie was marketed, and it's not Christopher, not the way Christopher Nolan makes movies. Oh well, I didn't watch any trailers. I didn't know who was in it. I just went in blind. Yeah, well, there was there was no there was no the, the marketing was literally just Killian Murphy walking and then an explosion. So I, I just think it, it's a case of a lot of people. I, I think me and Kev are, are in sync on this. A lot of people went in expecting one thing, and we got another. And what we got I, wasn't bad, but. It wasn't what we were expecting. I, I'm kind of half and half. I, I appreciate what was what was attempted. I think that there could have been a bit more fine tuning on the edit. Like in my opinion, fine tuning on the edit to make that a bit more succinct. See, I, think, I get I where you're was coming a, there was from. A, there was a couple of me, time, there was the intrigue was what kept yeah. me hooked. I did not feel the time going at all. I feel like okay. if you took anything out, it would be more of a film about the bomb or more of a film about the McCarthy stuff. And I feel like the way it's all laid out, it wants you to kind of work and put it together yourself. So, and I think, so I, I like it the way it is, but I get why people might be disappointed by it. That's, yeah. No, again, like I said, I don't think it's a bad movie. I think it is very good, but I, like, I love, the Chris Reynolds might be my favorite director. Mm. I, I think I'll always be very particular about how I like his movies. And, I'm I think same. I walk out yeah, Everyone I feel like I walk out of And my first thought as well It wasn't the prestige <laughs> <laughs> That's really fair That's really fair Like look, that's, That is that is an unfair judgment To put upon him But that's That's how I live my life But look See that, that see, This is I feel like The closest we've gotten Back to the prestige Because the prestige Was a film A character film About someone who invents things Tesla's yeah. in well, it Well know? here's the here, Well here's the thing right I'll just tell you right Tenet, for example, is not a good movie, right? It, it's nonsense. Complete mm. nonsense, right? Mm. But it's phenomenal. <laughs> you're watching, you're like, I love this movie. Despite the fact that as a movie, it, it falls apart like wet tissue paper. But you're watching, you're going, I just, I'm so entertained. What they're doing is incredible. The action scenes are great. The acting's really good. Uh, and, and it leaves you with some questions as well. But at the same time, you're like, Okay, well, and then Inception kind of has all of it, right? Where it's there as well. And you have some questions. The Batman movies obviously speak for themselves, with the exception of the third one. Um, oh, let's not get into that. No, let's not get into that. Uh, but with this one, I walked out. I was like, "Yeah, it was grand." And I was just like, "I, I really was expecting more than it was grand." And that's a disservice, maybe to the movie. It's a disservice to to maybe me watching it. But at the same time, I was like. Oh, I was I was expecting more, you know what I mean, uh, and yeah. that's what I didn't get. What I didn't get. Um, uh, so, well, I personally loved it. I thought that's, it yeah, no, I think, and yeah, like, and is, I mean that's I totally this fair. Is, that's I think totally this fair. is. I think this that like the gripes I have are definitely down to like personal taste. And same, yeah, from, absolutely. From same. an analytical point of view, yeah. this movie is spectacularly well. Put yeah, like, absolutely. Um, it, 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 it's a and, perfect. It's a perfect movie. It, it, it's a masterclass in movie making, filmmaking as yeah. a movie. Yeah. Well, like I mean, you talk because you talked earlier about the Barbie movie working on a couple of levels. Like, you know, one thing before we move on to something else is the entire film, as far as I can see, is bookended by a conversation between Oppenheimer and Einstein that we don't see. Yeah. And I won't say what the conclusion to it was, but it ticks away in the background and it raises the question of what is the legacy of these real life people? And this is a film that is the legacy of these real life people. So do you not think there's something interesting about the way that like these people are kind of living in the moment, kind of making the bomb, all that kind of stuff. And they're like, they're kind of insecure about their place in history and all that. Cause like they put that with Florence Pugh, they put that quote up very, very early on. Do you not think that it's kind of <laughs> inviting you to come to your own conclusions in some respects? Maybe. I mean, the thing about it is, is like, it, it's a very, when you're making a historical movie, um, like history is obviously, it's written by the winners and it's very subjective as well. Like, mm. it, you know, and this is the way it is. Like, what they say, if, if, uh, if everything is fake news, imagine how fake history is, right? That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. one of the, that's yeah. one of the quotes that goes around. And um, one of the things like revisionist history as well as a whole discipline in and of itself, where they will go through and, and, and present a new side to something. Um, with this, it's it very much takes its position, um, not supporting Oppenheimer, being like, look, this is as 
as straightforward as we get it. Mm. It does acknowledge, it, 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 to be fair, it does acknowledge how horrific it is. It does acknowledge what he built. It does acknowledge the flaws of the man. And it does acknowledge the fact that he was kind of screwed over near the end. Mm. But at the same time, I don't think there is any deeper reading on it. It's kind of like, it, it's, it's too, it leads you too much by the hand. Because by, as Kev said, the way it's paced. It, it sets everything up. And, and by the end of it, even Einstein is like, look, um, they will eventually come to see you, but you have, you've elf, you've outlived your usefulness in in essence, and we see that we see that happen, you know. So you are kind of spoon fed the conclusions in the movie. I think. Well, then, what do you think we're supposed to say, feel about Oppenheimer at the end, though? Exactly what what you're supposed to feel. No, but he, I'm asking you. What do you think you're supposed to feel? Um, you're supposed to feel sorry for him in a lot of ways. Uh, I, I didn't. <laughs> No, but you, you, like from my from 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 what the movie is kind of telling, you're supposed to feel sorry for him in, in certain ways, uh, particularly near the end. That yeah, he was shafted, but kind of uh, tied up in the end, lost a couple of years or whatever. Mm. Uh, that he wasn't a great man because you know most most people aren't; they're just human. And what he built was a net negative, mm. uh, even even the way it it did save a lot of lives or whatever. Uh, but even still, that that part of the war is disputed uh, based on the. The Russian invasion of um, Manchuria. Oh, the, the failed Russian invasion by the Nazis. It wasn't failed. No, the the the, the successful Russian invasion of Manchuria uh, a couple of days before. Oh, I thought. Sorry, I was, I was pitching earlier. Sorry. No, no, no. So that was that was happening. And there is a revision history around the end of World War Two, but mm. they do touch on those things. But they're the takeaways. I think. Kev, did I, did I miss anything, or what do you think? No, I think I think that's that's kind of where about I landed where. I, I didn't feel a lot of sympathy for him. I think, yeah, like, that's fair. A it's, lot, it's, it's a very lot of dug his own grave, and it also kind of like, it also made me feel very bad about the American political system at the time because you know it was yeah. it, it like it is it is the game like they mentioned it you know that you you know you like what was what's the quote they use uh, don't play the game the game plays you something yeah. like that yeah yeah um like that's yeah no like that is it is a feed it is a self feeding machine yeah. that even like itself forced the nuclear bomb to be dropped on Japan. Yeah, mm. essentially. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. what they're saying. It basically did. Yeah. Like if they had done anything else, it would have, it would have, the political system basically would have eaten itself. Yeah. And, and that's, uh, and, and that's a very thorny topic in and of itself. But yeah, you're right. You're spot on. Um, now, I would also like to, I, I want to get your guys' read on this because Kian, you mentioned it earlier. I thought, that the first utterance of the I am become death destroyer of mm. worlds line might be the funniest moment in a movie I've seen all year. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was literally, you know, that bit from Family Guy where it's like, oh, he said it. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking about the, the intimate uh, okay, scenario okay. I get you. involved yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the utterance. I yeah. can't, we can't say it. We're on No, line. we can't. We can't. It is, no, uh, me and my friends. Could not stop laughing. Yeah. Really? It, okay. Because I, unfortunately, I can't say what the term is called because we're on at five. But like, it is like, not to take the fun out of your laugh, but it is a thing that's popping up increasingly in screenwriting, which is that you put the most important thesis statements in an adult moment and it wakes the audience up and then they hear it because they did it in Game of, Game of Thrones, pioneered it basically. Like I suppose, it, I like it. Just it, it, it. it I think it, like what, what yeah. read to me is that because like it famously he's gone on record. He didn't actually say it when the Trinity test went off. No, oh, I didn't thought. know that. Okay, no, he said it years uh, later in an interview. Right, but he, he said that he said that it was his first thought. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah, when, yeah, yeah. So the movie frames it that the moment that bomb went off, his first thought was that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I suppose. I mean, Look, they, they had to force it in some way because yeah, they, they, you had to have it in earlier. Unless you could only either do it in the future, in like, or you could like, you have to see this, you know, because it because it'll just yeah. be weird and stylish. I get where I you're just, coming I, from. It didn't yeah. bother me personally. I, it, the context of it was incredibly funny to me. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I'm more on Kev's side in this one than, than Keen, but I do, I do get where you're coming from. I mean, Game of Thrones has ruined a lot of things, um, but. <laughs> As someone who was on the show several times, it, it, it has ruined an awful lot of things. I, I'm going to put in the chat what the technical term for it is in screenwriting because we can't say on the air, unfortunately. That's fair. But there is a Wikipedia article on it, for what it's worth. 
Uh, but yeah, no, I, I mean, I think we've kind of, we've come to sort of a two to one on Oppenheimer then. We've 10 minutes left, so I'm going to put it to the choice of you. Do you want to cover the film Talk to Me or will we do the Disney Plus stuff? Um, I, I can do a quick thing on, on Talk to Me and then we got the Disney yeah. Plus stuff because you guys are well, Go on, Dara, so. Um, if you get an opportunity to go see Talk to Me, do. Uh, it's, it's very, very good. Um, it's an Australian low budget horror movie that has a very, it's like Flatliner. It's like an Australian low budget Flatliners, uh, like the original one from the 80s. It's a very, very good premise. Uh, it's made by YouTubers, which is oh. insane because it's actually really technically good. And uh, if you get a chance to go see it, you'll have a really good time. So just very, very good, just good, good low budget horror. Yeah, no, and I mean, like it, it does an awful lot. It, it's actually very, very well made. It, it, it zips along very, very quick, and it's, it's not at all what you're expecting. It's, it's very, very decent. So, uh, okay. yeah, if you get a chance, it's totally worth a watch. Okay, so wait, is this in cinemas then, or it's in like... cinemas? Yeah, it, it, okay, uh, yeah, it's in cinemas. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, immediately just looking at it, I'm seeing the A24 logo. So yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. all tracks. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's like A24 movies uh, are always, there's always something there and they're always worth a watch. Even if it's just one watch, you will get your money's worth. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let's go Disney Plus. Secret okay, Invasion. So we've got the bear <laughs> and we've got Secret Invasion. I know nothing about the bear. So could I know nothing about the bear either. Kev, Kev go. Uh, which, uh, which surprises me so much because since I've been watching it, I feel like it's all I've been advertised. <laughs> Just even like, and not even like digital advertisements. It feels like I've seen that on every bus passing. I've seen, me I've seen the posters for it everywhere, yeah. but it's usually just a guy with his hand behind his head, and you're like, "That's it." What's so that? This is, so the succinct kind of like pitch on it, it is about, um, I think it's a real life. I think it is based on a real life restaurant in Chicago. It's based on a sandwich restaurant in Chicago. Uh, the main character Carmen is a three star Michelin chef, worked in some of the best top end restaurants in the world. His brother passes away, leaves him this very dingy, dirty Chicago restaurant. And it's just a character study of him and him and the rest of the uh, the rest of the staff and this the rest of the chefs and the staff in this restaurant just kind of working around each other. And it's very it's very messy. It's very stressful, but it might be one of the best pieces of like character TV I've seen in so many years. Um, it's it's very tight. The show does a wonderful job of like weaving in and around each character you really get to know them and the journeys that they go on but they're also most of them are terrible human beings <laughs> um but I, yeah like I, I i would give it i would recommend to give it a watch if like if you're not in the like if, if you're in the mood for something high intensity like right like, right it is. It is a movie that, like, all. Like, well, that's, it, well, that's what I was wondering. Is this a Gordon Ramsay type thing? No, or, it's it is fiction. Um, I, I know it's fiction, but yeah. is this one of those artistic chef yells at poor unsuspecting people type setups? Not really, because everybody in the kitchen does. It's it's also one of the shows that like will make you not want to work in a kitchen ever. <laughs> but <laughs> like fair. everybody heard, in the kitchen, uh, yeah, fair. everybody in the kitchen wants to be there, mm. but wants to be there and work their own way. Yeah. Right. Whereas, like, this guy is taking like high end New York uh, ways of running a kitchen and bringing it to homegrown Chicago. Right. Right. And like, there's it's it's that kind of clashing ideology, uh, but it's it's incredibly all directed. No, the ninth episode has this like they're made roughly 30, 40 minutes each. Uh, the, like the ninth episode of season one is a brilliant like one take episode. Like a one shot, really? Because it's funny. I, I wasn't going to bring it up until the end, but it's reminding me of the film Boiling Point. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. It's, it's an amazing film. It's on Netflix. It's all done. It's a film, an hour and a half film, all done in one take. Where it's just about a night in a restaurant where there's a reviewer in, and it's about all the like plot mechanics of like you know what's happening in the kitchen, what's happening here, like how you can how things go wrong so easily. Like, you know, the social media thing. They have to come out to the front and take selfies with the customers yeah. and then go back and scream at each other because things aren't done. So it's all that kind of... A kind of yeah, very like that. Vibes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I really would recommend it. Uh, and like everything from, as I said, its direction, the sound design, like when... what Like it, it has that brilliant thing that like, uh, that like, you know, Nolan would do a lot of as well mm. where, you know, particular things, there's always like something, something rattling or something whistling in the back. 
like get like just kind of you know like watching it wrapping up attention like yeah puts you on edge yeah uh but then the music design is also stellar like i i cannot recommend it enough um both there's two seasons out now both of them are on disney plus like in this one believe the ads well okay i will give that a check i'll also give it a go with our three and a half minutes left uh does anyone want to talk about secret invasion because this is something i seem to have enjoyed and no one else seems to be talking about but I'll get my two cents out before uh, the first before episode you two do, which is that I I thought it was a really good until the like the big dumb CGI fight that seems to dog every single Disney Plus series. There you go. I thought yeah. I thought it was a really good John Le Carre style thriller. I, I I feel like it actually needed a few more episodes. Yeah. I felt like it was putting more on the table than it had time to do. But also the ending did reassure us this isn't done. This yeah. is still ongoing. So I thought it was really, really good. I really liked what it did. I liked that it was a more character-driven Disney Plus thing. So yeah, I thought it was fantastic personally. What did you think there? I think you've taken the words out of my mouth. It it it, it had its moments where it was quite good. It was um, not as good as I thought it was going to be, not as good as yeah. it promised to be. But okay. again, another Disney show that's dogged by a terrible last episode. And it's a shame. It really is. Because so much happened in this and the stakes are like, Big different big things happen in this that will echo, and yeah. there's also fallout from it as well. But at the same time, it's like another like, Disney Plus show. I didn't show think the, just... the last episode was terrible. I really, really liked when the unfortunately I can't remember the character name off the top of my head, but when the villain and Samuel Jackson were squaring off, that was good in front that of the machine. That no, was but, really good. No, all the I'm... intrigue stuff moving around the hospital things. That's really good. No, what the resolution saying... was good. It's just that elephant in the room in the middle. That takes the wind out of it. Like, you see, that's you know. what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Uh, mm. The only thing we're left with at the end here is disappointment. Mm. Like it, it, what it, these Disney shows, they they can't end properly. That's the problem. Yeah. They're they're not given the room to end, and it's it's unfortunate because I mean I agree with you, Keen. I, I I really like those bits. I really like the show in general. Mm. I actually looked forward to it. I think I'm yeah. one of the only people, maybe other than you, Keen, who really enjoyed it. Um, until the end, and then that was it. Kev, what did you think? Of? I watched the first episode and stopped. Oh, that's <laughs> not, 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 not even that's out it. of like a sense of 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 hating it. Just like the first episode was intriguing, and then I just I think I was also just too busy. And it just yeah, I mean that's completely it. Completely, I just completely left my mind. And then I heard very middling things about how it ended, and I might get to it. I might not. Yeah, it's. I, I never. Like I never finished Moon Knight, so I'm, <laughs> it's I'm a shame. At a point where I've, I can I've still been saying for things. ages that all these Disney Plus things, I feel like the creator is that I would finish on the penultimate episode because I think I said it on another episode. One division, the entire conceit of it, the whole TV thing ends in the penultimate episode. Yeah, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier put their differences aside in the penultimate episode. Mm. Old Man Loki turns up in the penultimate episode. Yeah, like I feel like. Uh, with these shows they're given a prescribed ending and whoever is the actual showrunner like Moon Knight all the cool hippo desert stuff penultimate episode yeah I feel like there's this there's an expectation or an understanding that up until about the, the episode 5 you can do what you want but you gotta have the fight yeah That's the I think, I think, I think I hope, you're right I hope it goes away yeah but at the moment I don't mind that as long as the rest of the show is kind of given a bit of a loose rein, you know. I just, I, I just think it's, um, it's kind of like the the problem the Simpsons had, you know, mm-hmm. where it's a status quo thing, where yeah, it will still go back to being the status quo near the end. And even though in this we have two, you know, I'm not going to say who it is, but we have two major deaths that stick around, that will stick around. And at the same time, it's like, but will they stick around? Or will this just be undone? Or is everyone a scroll? Are these people not a scroll? And and then and now we have literally someone more powerful than every Marvel character ever, just there. Yeah, no people said that when Captain Marvel turned up. I don't. She's mind even that. more powerful than Captain Marvel. Yeah, I don't mind. Uh, know, I look. It's it's Ben Mendelsohn and Olivia Coleman with acting opposite Samuel Jackson and having a whale of a time. Yeah, they, they are wonderful. I'm here for they that. Are wonderful. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I can take a few licks as long as the majority of it's good. I mean, sure, um, I wish I knew her name off the top of my head, but the Game of Thrones actor is superb as well. All the she's actors are superb. She's all right. No, she's not too bad. Um, she's great in this, and so is the actor who plays the villain. I feel like 
it's a shame that you know we find out that he's not who he is. But like, sorry, spoiler. Uh, but Don Cheadle was yeah. more interesting in this than most of the MCU. That's true. Felt like him dressing down Samuel Jackson was great. You yeah. know, if you got a sense of like, actually, here's what happens behind the explosions. You know, which I yeah. like. Yeah, as I said, I, I think that's a very good way to look at it. Like these Disney Plus shows all have something in them, right? Every one of them that is good. It's just undermined by something else. And that's, and again, like this has been confirmed in that Disney report I was saying earlier on, because it's content and it's a stream of content that has to come out, something has been lost somewhere. Either it's a strong editorial hand or creativity or something where it needs to conform. And as long as that's there, guys, um, this is going to keep happening, but maybe it won't. Maybe it'll go away because of the, the, the writer strike or whatever, but maybe. we'll see. We are at time, unfortunately. So, uh, Dara, is there anything you want to say before we wrap? Yes. Um, go to the Game of Thrones thing up north. That's a lot of fun. Uh, I was there. I, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, and, and you're speaking as someone who was in it. So yes, like, it's, it's, know, it's, it's, it's authentic. Yeah, it's great. It really does. Uh, it used to be up by the it used to be up by the Titanic, but they moved it outside the city now, and they actually have like a lot of the backstage stuff. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I really enjoyed being like, oh, there's like the, the person who shouted at me in the costume department and stuff like that. <laughs> and it's just really funny because it's like they actually capture what it was like being backstage. Mm. Uh, I'm like working on it. So yes. it's a lot more authentic and it's it's a really good day out. So I, I can't recommend it enough. Nice. Kev? Uh, no, not much else. Um, I could tell you all about the five and a half hour Shrek YouTube video I've been watching, but <laughs> we don't have time. So catch me right here. I might talk about that next week. <laughs> okay. I will also say that um, myself, my family will be at Comic-Con because this is the last episode we'll go before Comic-Con, Dublin Comic-Con. So if you happen to see a Bowser chasing a family of small children in the costume competition, that is me. Give us a wave. Uh, and I think hopefully, I'm not sure, we haven't got confirmation whether the entire Nerd to Know team will be there yet or not, but I'll certainly be there and I'm easy to find. So feel free to come and say hello if you like. But otherwise, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back with some, hopefully some Final Fantasy 16 stuff next week. We shouldn't have time for this week. But until then, I've been Kian. I've been Dara. I've been Kev. And we'll be back next time. All right. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to a Nerd to Know Media production.